Hi everyone, Matt here from PA Models. Welcome back to the channel. And for this little mini series, what I'm going to be doing is painting and weathering a Tack and Panzer one. So as you can see, this has already been assembled, put together straight out of the box. Um, just got to add the sort of exhaust covers, the photo etch exhaust covers when it's painted. So really straightforward kit, really nice kit. Obviously, you get two versions in the box. This is the A. You also get the B, which has got the extra wheel. So, obviously, just pay attention when you when you are building this. Um, but again, I have to say the instructions were pretty clear, to be honest. So, I've got this quick coat of aerosol primer. As you can see, it's a quick coat of black and a quick coat of sort of Tamiya white primer over the top. So, what I'm going to do is we've got some. Just move that out of the way. Is the Gen threes. Okay, now as a company at PM, we're uh, going to be stocking these in the future. So, just going to do some tests and just have a play, see what the, you know, what they're good at and what they're not, and things like that. All right, so this is one they like a modulate modulation set, I would say. There you go, you get a bit of a a guide on the back of, of what to use. Again, modulation set's been around for a long time. A lot of companies do them. Uh, I have tried these Gen 3s, I've been brush painting in one of the previous videos which was the uh, the German SS Soldier was painted in, in brush painted in the Gen 3s. I've also had a bit, bit of a play off camera with other colours as well in the range just to see you know what they're like and uh, how they go down and stuff. So this is going to be first time on camera so it probably all go pear shaped as it normally does as soon as you set the thing rolling. But um, we'll see how we get on. And hopefully we'll get some good results. So as you can see, I have the first colour mixed up. Alright. So that is, according to our guide, ash grey. Which is the base. And what I've done is put a few drops of the Gen 3 acrylic thinner in it. Okay, this is apparently the new Formula 1. Uh, I've got no retarder in this. No flow improver, nothing. I'm just going to go straight for thinners and paint, see what happens. Okay. I've got the usual sort of, I don't know, cream, I suppose. Single cream. Don't, no real measuring, if I'm honest. All right, so just chuck a bit in the uh, old airbrush. Right, build it up in light coats. Number two heavy. Just gonna give this a general full coat of this. Coverage seems good. Seems to be going on nice and smooth. I haven't had any tip dry at the minute, which is always a good sign for acrylics. Or a bad sign, should I say. And a bit of an Achilles heel, but um, so far that's good. I do a bit of bubbling in my cup, that's probably the airbrush rather than the actual.
paint itself. Probably the pressure sounds high on camera, but actually it's, it's quite low. I think it's just because it's just bouncing off all the nooks and crannies. It's making a bit of a, a bit more of a racket. But even at low pressure, when you when you've just barely got the trigger going, it's uh, it's working okay. As you can see, it's going down pretty pretty nicely. So again, instead of just spending the you know a load of time, I'm going to base this up, carry on. If there is any problems, obviously I'll, I'll get the camera running, let you know what it is, whether it's tip dry or you know any other problems that we can get with acrylics. And for those of you who can see a big gap there, that's because actually the top of the hull is not attached to the bottom. I'm going to separate it so I can paint the track. So. I just it just kind of clicks into place, but there you go. Look, I can just pull it up and pull it down. So when uh, when it is painted and and that, I will attach it and then just do a touch up there. So another good feature about this, especially when you've got to paint the tracks and they're uh, obviously under the under the skirts. So I'll carry on with this and then we'll see. I'll see you back when we've got a full base coat on it. Hi everyone, welcome back. So what we're going to do now is add the light coat on, which is going to be the graphite colour. All right, pre-mix this already. We've got it in the uh, in the airbrush. If you can see. So what we're going to do is, is hit all the high spots. Okay, as you can see, I've just been doing a bit of a bit of testing of of the airbrush here. Okay. So we're going to lay this on. So any of the high spots or separation of panels Okay, then we'll do the rear deck and we'll pick out some So the plan is just to build up the layers again, okay, get some lighter spots, bit of separation. It's, it's one of them techniques that looks wrong, but for a better word, when you're putting it down, it's just like, 
yeah is this going to work but it's it's the weathering that, and the and the perhaps the filtering and everything that just brings it and pulls it all back in together so yeah the color modulation technique is one of them is you know i've i've seen some of the the masters at it i suppose just push it to where i didn't go to be honest with it um with, with how they've gone with the colors and the brightness and it still seems to pull it all back together I'm just sort of, I won't say learning the technique, but we're always learning. I'm, I'm just figuring out what, where I want to be with it, I suppose, how far I want to push it. So, again, I said it just putting the base coat down. This is just a test of the paint as well as a practice sort of piece for me. So, why not put it on video, you know, see what happens. If it all goes pear shaped then you know that's the lesson learnt isn't it so If you don't like it what you do is just bring the base coat back in the original tone and just blend it all in so nothing's ever lost So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it there for now. All right, we've got the light bits on as an initial highlight. I'm going to now then come in with sort of the shadow tone to try and separate some of the panels. I suppose a bit of post shading, for want of a better word. Um, put that in some of the darker recesses, add a bit of shadow in, and then assess it again if we need to come back with more highlights, more bass tones. Then we can do. You, you just go until you're happy with it. So, again, thanks for watching. And um, we'll see you again with the shadow tones. So we're back to move on to the dark shade. Which for this one is going to be this colour here. Alright, I've just pre-mixed it again so it's already in the airbrush. Same um, thinners and I've added a little bit of airbrush cleaner as a bit of a flow improver just to help with um, you know getting it through the airbrush a bit, bit cleaner so basically this is supposed to be the shadow colour so if you're just going to go off this little diagram here obviously this is down the bottom well I'm going to do something a bit different I want to just try and highlight I've just split the uh, top of the top of the hull off so we're going to see how it kind of post shades so it looks like it darkens these panel lines off okay what it will probably end up doing and i will definitely end up doing is going back over with the proper color um, sorry the the light um, the lighter color and probably the base color in hindsight i should have put the base color on then done the dark and then gone over it okay but in my infinite wisdom i got a bit carried away and put the light colors on so might be going bit bit backwards and forwards. I won't, it, you know, I won't be filming. I'll just come back and explain it. But yeah, we're just going to do that for now. So, like I say airbrush is loaded. I'm going to take the tip off. Try and pull the uh, safety safety cap off. Okay. So what we're going to do is.
So we've got the post shading there. All right, a bit rough and ready, to be honest. Taking me again a bit of use to using acrylics again after um, mainly using lacquers. But as you can see, we've uh, outlined the detail, darkened up the panel lines, and just generally made a bit of contrast from one to another. What I'm going to go back, go back to now is, like I said, is the base colour and the light shade, and just blend this in a little bit more, just where you know where it's gone a bit of a mess in certain places. Um, turrets also done. To just add some grime around you know, with the turret ring at B and stuff like that. So, okay, same with the hatch. And I've done a little bit on the wheels, but I'm not going to bother because obviously that's going to get sort of um, obviously mud and dust effects and up and general dirt and grime. So, what I do now is off camera is just obviously tidy this lip, this this up where it's uh, a bit too strong. Blend it back in. And then we'll come back and um, and see where we're at. So I've now finished off the base painting. As you can see, I've been up, done, um, gone round and done some touch-ups. So just to blend in the darker sort of pre-shading that I put on in the previous step. I've also done a bit of the mottling technique just to break it up because it's a bit of a monotone colour. All right, this is a very I'd say stylized version of Panzer Grey. But actually, I think once it's painted and weathered, it's going to be pretty, um, pretty interesting to be honest. So, what I'm going to do now is give this a satin coat. Okay, just show you the, the hatch as well. So we've kind of got a bit of a map as well where uh, boshes and sort of um, you know where we want the panel lines to stand out and stuff. So. Give this satin coat, get some decals on it, then we'll come back and then we'll start the weathering process. So thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.